Okay, so this is Jeff, the Big Hairy Dog. This is a webinar from Big Hairy Dog on um, mobile point of sale. And um, we're going to look at two different things here. So we're going to look at uh, Foundry Logic and Prism. Um, both pretty good solutions. Prism is sort of the direction of the future. This is Prism right here. Um, this is the, on the local machine now. Um, and the local machine can access Prism. Um, and the same token, so can, uh, so can the, um, the mobile device. So this here is a remote connection to uh, an iPad mini. Um, so you can use an iPod, an iPad, an iPad mini, whatever your work. I like the iPad mini, it's small. And, and light, and uh, I'm old, and it's easy for me to see. So, if you see what I mean, it's, it's pretty flexible. Um, this is the next generation of Retail Pro, so to speak, and uh, it can be run. It's supposed to be completely uh, operating system agnostic and uh, browser agnostic. Uh, so, it's not supposed to care. I think it does a little bit, but um, that being said, it's still pretty nice, pretty flexible, and then this version is pretty slick I gotta say so um, anyway let's get back to our our direction here where we're going right so um, Foundry Logic has been the, the mainstay of of uh, of our remote point of sale up to Prism and as we migrate into Prism I suspect they'll both be doing that I don't know yet uh, Foundry Logic is very nice though um, it lets us um, Let's get our, I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. Um, it, it lets you make sales on an iPad or an uh, iPod. It makes you, you could also transfer them over to the point of sale. Uh, of course, Prism is basically a workstation in your hand. So Prism is, it's, it's just, it's just Prism, right? It's, it's not like a remote version. It's actually uh, fully functioning. Uh, on that point, let's just take a quick peek down here. You see that I have two different Prism proxies running down here. So that's 8080. That's the local machine. And this is 8081. This is the other workstation that I'm holding in my hand. So they're both just workstations in Prism. And once configured, can do whatever they, you can do, right? I mean, there is an option, which we're not going to explore probably, but there's an option to take um, the Prism uh, and I guess I let it go to sleep here, didn't I? Um, let's look it back up. Um, the Prism menu and, and make it vertical, right? There's a, there's a vertical version of this that'll stack those menu icons. Uh, you really don't need it on an iPad mini or an iPad because an iPad is so flexible that you can see it just fine. But on the iPod, it starts to get a little small and then the vertical menu, which you can change to in the preferences, for that 8081 uh, is a little bit more limiting. It's just about point of sale, but it's, it's fully functional for point of sale. So I, I think that if you're just using it to, you know, like a handheld small device, which we'll look at those, uh, at point of sale actually is pretty slick. Um, all right, so <clears throat> we've got this great write up here, but I think that you get you get it. You can read the screen as well as I can. Right? Obviously, they can make quick sale. They can. They can make a sale with a customer. You can add customers in both versions, right? So um, you can place a, a transaction on hold. Um, you can absolutely do item searches. We'll probably do item searches in both here. We can search for customers the same way. Um, you can affect shipping. Of course, Prism being a full functioning version of a workstation, you can do anything you can do on the regular workstation. But uh, Foundry Logic has made accommodations for all that as well. Um, so. This is just some of the um, devices. So this little device down here, that's actually a Captuvo. Uh, that's an older version of the devices that we're selling now, but it, they're all very much similar. If you put them on the counter and we're looking at them at a distance, you could, sort of couldn't tell the difference. But <clears throat> the iPod, of course, if you, if you want to go with an iPod on either version, we don't sell the iPods directly because you can buy them cheaper, actually on the open market, then we could sell them to you, right? So we're probably not going to try and compete with Target. 
Um, and you don't need a, a robust one. You don't need, you know, 512 gigabytes or anything wacky like that, right? Um, not to process sales anyway. Um, now, both devices have uh, credit card solutions, right? So they're a little bit different, but you have to go with the the um, PCI compliant device with uh, Foundry Logic. It's an um, it's a Genius Mini, which looks very much like the Square. You know what I mean? The little white Square that's out there, except it's black. Other than that, it's a little box that that that, that basically you hand to the customer and they slip their card in it. Uh, the um, the um, Prism uses the other device. It's a, it's a, like a it's a like a Genius Mobile. It looks like a cell phone. It's got a little screen on it, and in that respect, it's a little bit nicer because it pops over and 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 they can process their card, put their, put their card in, they can key their pin pad in, they can do what they can do on a regular pin pad. Um, so both are very good, though. Both are, for, are, are nice. Uh, I, I've used both of them. And uh, anyway, let's get uh, on to some more stuff. Uh, yeah, we just talked about PCI compliance, and there's the whole layout for for how the mobile works with Prism. Um, basically, it's a wireless network connection. Prism is super light. The footprint on Pr Prism is just a browser, right? So it's not like a, a regular workstation. It doesn't not as meaty as all that. Um, and there are multiple connection configurations in Prism, which we can go into if you guys want to. <laughs> we went through this pretty much. This is just Prism's version of the same thing. Right, so that that's a little a mini right there. That's the there's two versions of the of the of the of the mini. There's the version that plugs in directly to the iPod and it kind of hangs off the bottom, which you can get, or there's the one that's totally separate and it's Bluetooth. And if you get the separate Bluetooth one, you have to download the Genius Mini Bluetooth app. You can't just connect to it. Because of security reasons and PCI compliance, they have a private app that, that connects to Bluetooth. It's not a big deal. You download it from the store and you're good, right? And that's the um, that's the, the smaller menu, FYI, right there on the left on the bottom. That's the the vertical menu. If you're using an iPod, that's what it would look like. Instead of instead of like that, right? Instead of the um, the big menu, it would it would be just the vertical buttons that pertain to point of sale. Um, and, and there's there is some Prism configurations, which we're not. This isn't really about Prism, so I'm not going to go deeply into this. But <clears throat> in the first uh, the first picture on the left there, that's that's uh, that's working without a safety net is what that is. So you see that all three of those workstations go right to the Prism server, which could be in a different state, right? You're basically browsing in, using the browser, going straight to Prism, and there if you lose internet, you're down, right? That's that's it. In the next configuration, you see that they've they placed a, a Microsoft SQL server in the middle there. So they got a MySQL or a little copy of MySQL running on a PC at the store. So then the Prism talks and dumps into MySQL. MySQL then talks to your Prism server. Now you have a safety net. And if you lose the internet for a minute, you won't lose your internal connection to your server. You follow? And then on the far right hand side, they've got little MySQL servers on, on the machines as well. So you could do both. Like they have, they have a, a central server in the store and they have the little ones backing up each machine, or you could just do the ones on the machine right to corporate. Now, obviously, an iOS device, right, if we're going to go with an iPad, um, we're not going to be able to put a MySQL database on, on, on an iPad, right? Not going to happen. You could switch to, like, a little mini. I've seen little mini pads, like a, a Dell mini pad that is basically an operating PC. And then you could put a little local database on there. It has to be a pretty robust device. I'd be worried about a device like that being in the hands of employees walking around the store, potentially dropping it. Um, the uh, iPad cases that they sell, the sleds, right, are very, very robust. You know, these, uh, if we could find a picture again of uh, none, none there, but th there, there are bigger versions of these here, right, for the iPad mini and for the iPad, right? So, you could get a nice protective sled that has has the scanner built in, so 
so you can just press a button and it'll scan as opposed to having to take a picture of the barcode, right? So, um, and those are just some other devices that are not mobile phone of sale. Let's, let's stop playing with the silly PowerPoint and let's go play with some applications, right? So, um, all right, so let's, um, let's back out of here for a minute and let's flip that around. All right, so on the screen you see we have, we have different applications. The blue one right here, that there, and it's gonna get angry at me now because I held it too long, right? But that right there, that's the um, Foundry Logic mobile point of sale, right? So, um, and if I pause for a second on that, right below it is the this one here. This is the physical inventory app, which we're not really going over today, but, but Foundry Logic has both FYI so that you could use this as a portable scanner now you have to license both apps, but you could use it as a portable scanner to take physical inventory or to receive or to sell if you wanted to upload. Because if you're selling, you just would go to the mobile phone and say, what am I talking about here, right? Um, but you could walk around the store with the mobile app. You could um, scan a bunch of products, and then you could upload that to you know, a PO, for instance, right? Those are options, right? So this is what the Foundry Logic looks like here. Um, and on the top right corner, I'm gonna use the mouse here because I can, and you guys can see the mouse hopefully. Um, there's a new button, which I can't click in this, this air server is a very sweet thing, but it doesn't give me mouse control. So I'll go back to the old finger here, right? Um, and I can click new to start a new transaction. There's a new transaction. Um, in the bottom here, I can, um, now if I had a scanner, I could just scan it, but I'm in the office here and I don't have a scanner hooked up to this device and I don't have any merchandise to scan if I did, right? So we're gonna go ahead and do it manually. I'm gonna click a little tray. So at the bottom here, there, here's a scanner, by the way, if, if I wanted to use the, um, if I wanted to use the, uh, see, it'll, it'll, it'll just show you my desk, right? Um, but we're gonna go back. We're not gonna try and scan with the, with the camera. Uh, right to the left of that little barcode down there is the tray, right? The tray says that, that we're going to go search for an item, right? So we could go, I could type a search in the top or I could pick an item. If you pick an item, it'll show you the item. Uh, you could pick the size and color you want. If you have an image, it will load the image for you and show you what that item looks like. Um, if you want to select it, upper right corner here, it says select. So I'm going to select that item and it's gonna put that item on the transaction and show me a total at the bottom, right? And I can continue down that path if I want to. Um, you see that the customer down here has got a little uh, exclamation point on it, and I could click in there, and again, we could search for a customer if I wanted to, um, or I could pick one. And I could select it, and it'll put the customer on there. I also have a menu on the bottom down here on the left, and the menu on the bottom on the left gives me access to all those other things, right? So if I wanna put a transactional discount or if I wanna change the customer, I wanna add a shipping address, I wanna make a comment, if I wanna use my flags or add a fee to the transaction, and I don't really have any great desire to do any of that today. So on the top, uh, I'm gonna click this uh, checkout, right? Where it said new, now it says checkout. We're gonna click checkout. And I'm not actually hooked up to any credit card devices, so I'm going to fake it and say that we have a credit card. And it's going to be angry at me because I don't actually have a credit card device. So I'm just going to say it's the, you know, it's a Visa and put some numbers in here to make it happy. And We're gonna click done. And on the top right, it says finish. I'm gonna click finish. And um, now both these can hook up to printers. Both these can email directly. Either way, it's not a big deal. I'm just gonna click finish. We, I'm not gonna bother printing the receipt here because I don't have that printer actually. And it would be awkward. Um, now both, of the products, I mean, Prism is Prism, right? So Prism is a workstation on your network. 
just like any other workstation on your network. So Prism isn't really necessarily relaying the data into Retail Pro. If you see what I'm saying, it it is Retail Pro. It's 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 a workstation on on the Retail Pro network or on the Prism network, and so any Prism workstation would communicate back to a central Retail Pro 9 database the same way, whether it be in your hand or in your um, on a physical workstation. Right. Uh, that being said, um, I'm going to back out of here. We're going to see if I back out of there and refresh the screen. Come on. Might be a little angry. I'm running a lot of stuff on this PC, and it's not the newest PC in the world. Come on, you can do it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you see that that this one was already here. This one here is the one I just made with that customer, right? So uh, Foundry Logic is relaying these transactions, not real time, but very, very quickly. Within probably five seconds of making the transaction, it'll be in Retail Pro on the back end. So it's not real time, but it's damn close to real time. Um, and of course, if you have a connection, either one of these, I guess, could, could be used uh, fully remote, but you'd need an iPad with, with like cellular, like a, an internet connection, and it would have to be configured to get through your firewall, right? So there's some extra technical hurdles to get over there to use this like fully remote, if you see what I mean. Um, but it could be done. Um, of course, if you have a, a regular wireless network and you want to do like a sidewalk thing, either one of these would be great. All you'd need is your local area network. It would be uh, no other configurations re required. You see what I mean? Um, okay, so um, let's back out of there and let's switch our view here and let's go back into Prism. And then here I'm generally going to flip it over like that because it's just easier to see the screen. Um, let's go to New Transaction and let's see if we can get it to go to New Transaction. Perfect. And again, if I had a like a, a scanner hooked up to this device, I could. Um, I could start scanning, but that's more like Tinker Toys, you know what I mean? That's just a device that inputs something, right? So I'm just going to type in something and press return. Um, and it's going to go look the item up. And if I keep going, if I type in another item and return, it's going to keep going. I'm going to put my focus back on. Okay. This one is a conflict. I forgot about that. Apparently, I have two items with the same lookup code in my database. So, you know, I'm going to pick one here and select the item. And now we're going to change our focus back to the transaction so you can see the two items I've rung up, right? Um, in every respect, this is a, a workstation. So if I'm highlighting an item, um, Anything I can do in regular Prism should be able to be done here. Um, although I'm not getting all the responses I want. Up here, let's look up a customer, I guess. Let's go in there. Let's type in something and search and see what we get here. Right, so we found Sarah. It just added Sarah because she was the only one with that name, right? So I typed in her last name and did it. I could have I could have opened up the database and searched for it directly, just like you can do in regular Prism. I mean, just like Retail Pro in that respect. Um, uh, over here, if we click on that, um, there is a details function here that lets you open the item. Um, so here you can see uh, I can do anything I can do in Retail Pro, right? I can I can modify, I can give a discount, I can change associates, I can put notes on it, I can check on hands, um, all of it's here, right? So it's not a big deal in that sense. Um, let's see here, am I missing something? Yeah, there you go, I'm gonna cancel that. They uh, they got smart about the discount, by the way, and they, they added the discount to the line right there so that you can just click right there 
do the discount. You don't have to open up the detail box, right? So it's defaulting right now to price, but I could change it to, so I could put in, I could change it to percent here, and then I could put in whatever I want to put in if I could get the iPad here to respond. But you see where we're going here, right? Um, it just makes it a whole lot faster to get into um, get into that discount field. All right. Um, there is also over here on the right hand side a transaction detail button. So that's over here on the right. Um, and the transaction detail button you can see has everything that a regular retail pro workstation would have. So you have access to your flags, your fees, your shipping, associates, price levels, discounts, transactional discounts, taxes, and the notes on the transaction level. I don't know that we need to go through all that. I'm not even sure how many people use that out there. But if you do, it's it's there. That's the important thing, right? So, um, and I'm not seeing any any comments or chats. So if you guys have any questions, again, feel free to to, to insert them or if you if you ask me to, I'll unmute you. You can talk. Most people don't want to, but I always welcome it. It's nice to have a dialogue. Um, all right. So then um, on the bottom right here, we see that it says tender transaction. So if I click into the tender screen, uh, I did not change mine. You can default the tender to whatever you want. Mine's defaulting to cash. That is the default out of the box. Um, I can change that down here at the bottom. It says uh, tender, tender type, right? So I can just come down to that with my little finger here. And open it up, and I could change it to credit card. And of course, I don't have a actual uh, integration to a um, to a pin pad because we are just in the office. And so I'm just going to fake it here and put some stuff in, and it won't care. We're going to say take that, and let's flip it back around here. So uh, on the bottom right now, you see it says print update. I'm going to click print update. And I believe this one's configured to allow me to to preview. And the preview does look much better in portrait than it does in landscape. So we'll we'll flip over to portrait so we can see the, the print job pop up, right? So that's, the, um, that's just a doc design in Prism with using the Prism doc designer. We can modify it. We can add logos. We can move things around like... Uh, I didn't do this one, but I would have moved that barcode over. That's bugging the heck out of me, right? It does have a nice return policy on it, right? So, cancel. Um, it should now reset back to the regular screen. Um, at which point, I could just start scanning the transaction, right? So, we'll, uh, we'll do a cash one real fast. To look at that because there's an over tender aspect to cash that we probably should should handle. Although I don't know how much cash you really do on a remote device, right? It's tricky. You'd have to have a centralized cash drawer. And as far as the printing goes, like when I set it up for a, one of the team shops for one of the the, the football team we were we were working with, um, they had six registers at the front, and they had four mobile devices. Uh, so they just they just keyed all the mobile devices to use the the one register that was closest to the door, right? So the one register that's closest to the door is ringing a customer, and they're printing their receipts, but then randomly other receipts just print on their printer because they're right by the door. So you could walk a customer over, click print, grab the receipt, and they could go right out the door, right? So anyway, um, it's up to you on how you configure that stuff, right? So if we go to tender, we're on cash. Um, it says we owe 129 bucks, so we could pop into here and say that we're going to take, you know, uh, 200. I don't know, take right. Then it's going to ask us how we want to give back the change, right? Sometime, hopefully soon. Did I not click take? There we go. So we took that much, and then it's asking how we want to give back the 7040. I'm just going to say give back as cash, and then uh, print update, right? And that's our change window saying, hey, make sure you give back the change. Duh. I would hope we all can remember to do that. Although customers can be 
can be tricky sometimes when they're asking a lot of questions, right? Cancel. All right, so that's that's a fully functioning Prism workstation, uh, which is exactly the same as this here. This is just on the local workstation, right? So this is launched locally here, and I could go into uh, a new transaction exactly the same. I could scan or key in an item exactly the same. It would look up exactly the same. And of course, now I have a full keyboard. Uh, so I'm going to say 10 here percent. Uh, and let's try this again, I guess, 10. Right, so it just took a discount on that item. It's now showing 10% for 108 instead of 120, right? So um, if we go to details, let's see if we go to details, we go to discount. Um, yeah. So discount amounts twelve dollars. Percentage is ten. So the, you know, one hundred eight is the current discount, right? Anyway, we can cancel out of there. Uh, you know, we could look up a customer again if we wanted to right here. Um, we could add a new customer right here. We can go to the transaction details. We've already seen that. Don't know that we need to revisit it. Um, there are multiple. I was trying to get this to pop up on the iPad, but it wasn't responding fully correctly. So. In the images section, which maybe I should get a better item. Um, but uh, you should be able to click this. If they have multiple images, you should be able to scroll through the images that they have. Obviously, you put their images on in Retail Pro, and then you push them over to Prism, typically. Um, I'm not sure Prism is fully functional in adding images yet. They just got the style level built. So now you can actually build a style grid natively in Prism, which is kind of cool, kind of exciting. However, that's not why we're here for today. We're here for mobile point of sale. So let's go to the tender here real quick and you know wrap this one up. So it's a credit card, select the type. And of course, normally you would just click OK on this. It would feed over to the pin pad device, right? And, uh, and they, they would handle it all on the device. And uh, for an update. And preview. Yep, there you go. Yep. Cancel. Ah, got some questions. Let's see what those questions are and let's see if we can answer them. Thank you, by the way. I appreciate not just talking to myself. Uh, can I take I set up a time to talk to someone specifically about our situation and what may or may not work. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the salespeople would love to talk to you, and the salespeople can pull into uh, into the conversation. Any of us text, we can we can we can uh, absolutely get. I mean, what you'd want to do is you'd want to you'd want to let the salesperson know exactly what you want, what your circumstances are, and then have them set up a time with me or another technician to actually show you what we can do and how it works and talk about your options. That'd be the smart thing to do. I think anybody should do that before they spend a dime on any of this stuff. I think you should absolutely understand the full lay of the land. And Big Gray Dog has always been known for showing you how it works, right? We, are, we know this is a tricky industry and, and we know there's a lot of vaporware out there and we would rather take the time and show you what, what we can do up front uh, rather than say, oh, yeah, we could do that. I mean, so please, yes. Um, you can reach out to service, for instance, to have them schedule a lot of time with me. You could reach out to the salespeople. The sales, sales at bigcarrydog.com would, would, for an email address. Or if you have a rep that you're already working with, like Karen or Felicia or Oleg or, or, or Joanne or Elise, or I can't remember them all. They change. I've been here since 1996, um, so I've seen a lot of folks come and go. We have some really good people over there, though. Uh, Karen's been here longer than me. She's the only one that has been, in fact, here longer than I have. Uh, but but Felicia's been here a long time, too. They've all been around for a while. They know what they're talking about. And then they don't. We have a whole room full of technicians, right? So uh, here at the Big Hairy Dog, we have far more technicians than we have salespeople, I'll tell you right now. So. It's always our desire to 
show you what we can do and show you how it works and give you the options on how you want to configure it. Um, but yeah, we would love to have that opportunity. And thank you very much uh, for the, uh, Katie, for the, um, for the question. Yeah. All right, so any other questions? Um, this is not a terribly long topic, as you can tell. So we have a, I, I, we had an hour scheduled. I have a two hour time slot here, but, but um, we're only about half an hour into it. And I think we've pretty much exhausted our material. So if there's any questions or anything we would like to explore deeper, I have no problem doing that. If we're, if we're good then and we're all done, then I can also wrap this up. Either way, we want to go on that. Um, if there's any transaction you want me to do in either Prism or in Foundry Logic, I would be glad to do that. I'm, ready. Uh, I'm already on V9. Would you recommend going with Foundry Logic or straight to Prism? Well, that, that, that's kind of a tricky one, um, Susan. Uh, I would look at the licensing. That's what I would look at. Um, Foundry Logic is is fast, down and dirty solution, um, but the future is Prism, right? So um, it depends on what the licensing differences are and how much money it's going to cost to get into Prism, because it changes your licensing some. Uh, where Foundry Logic is a a um, it's a it's a, it's a subscription now. They used to be a buy and own thing and they changed in version four to a subscription model. So it's a lot cheaper to get into, but then it's a monthly fee, right? Forever. So um, I think I would have to look at both options and I would have to weigh them out and get get um, get them. Um, another question here, how can I get a copy on the deck? By on the deck, you mean on your iPod or on your iPad? Um, you can download either of those. Now, with Prism, um, with Prism, you would have to, uh, like if we go back here for a sec, let's see, so Prism, if I go, can I, uh, can I exit this completely? Let's, um, let's, let's log out, right, and can pop back a little farther. Can we go back farther? Um, All right, let's go here. Uh, continue. Right, so so when you first, let's okay, cancel that. So when you first launch, let's get on the right screen here. We're not on the right screen, are we? Let's see, do we lose our connection? It looks like we might have lost our connection. Let's just get that back. Okay, so reconnecting my iPad to the uh, screen. Right, so that right there. When you first launched the Prism app, that's what the that's what the connection wizard looks like. Uh, I had an invite forwarded to me, so I didn't get the presentation deck. Um, not sure what that means, uh, James. It didn't get the presentation. Uh, oh, the PowerPoint. Uh, I didn't send the PowerPoint out. I could send the PowerPoint out if you guys, I guess, if you want to, right? I mean. Uh, I, I can go back over that if you want to hang around for a minute. Not a big deal. Uh, but I will say that 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 um, the um, both the Prism app and the Foundry Logic app, both of these apps are, are available in the in the Apple Store if you want to download. And and Foundry Logic has, I believe, uh, when you download them, there's instructions on. I think you can look it up online on how to connect to their server, so you can just run it like a. Uh, um, yeah. yeah, all right, let me see if I can. I've never actually done a handout. Let's see if we can do a handout. So choose a file. This may be a little dated, by the way, but I have no problem sharing it. So we will, we will go get that right now and put that out in the handout land. Uh, all right. All right, so there is the PPT for that. And that just uploaded. So hopefully you guys can see that handout. And it is a PowerPoint, so you will have to have, you know, a version of Microsoft Office with PowerPoint to open it. 
but I have no problem sharing it with you, and you guys can go through it and take a look at it and peruse. I also would recommend, uh, like on my iPhone, I downloaded both, all, all these apps actually on my iPhone as well, and I connected them to to the um, the Foundry Logic. I think it's demo.foundrylogic.com is the, is the connection server. Um, I think George is a user, so you can sign in with George as the username and password. So it's just George, George. Um, and so you could actually download the apps and play with them on your iPhone. Now, Prism will be tricky because you won't be able to connect to a Prism server because you'd have to actually have a Prism server to connect to. So I don't know if I would download that unless we get a Prism server set up. Although we probably could arrange maybe to get a server set up that you guys could connect to if you wanted to play with one of ours. Um, so yeah, would would be would be open to any of that. Um, but that's the way you really get to the feel for the products, right? And then it comes down to what kind of hardware do you want? I've seen there's just a ton of hardware out there. I saw an iPad, a full sized iPad with a device, a scanner that plugged into the bottom of it and, and sort of acted like a cradle to hold the iPad, but the iPad was not fully protected in that one. But the sweet thing about it is it, you, you held it in your hand on the cradle and it held the iPad firmly and then you squeezed the, the little button on the cradle and it shot a barcode straight down. So you could hold it over the item and shoot straight down and I loved that. That was a very nice piece of hardware. Um, I also like the, the the cases that fully encompass the iPads because I just I just really think someone's going to drop one out there, but that's just me. So, um, but there's just a plethora of hardware. It's changing all the time. The only only tricky thing really that you have to to worry about is the, the credit card processing and the PCI compliance. So if you go with Prism, you have to use the PCI compliant right version for processing. And if you go with uh, Foundry or Logic, you ha have to use their PCI solution as well. So um, that's just based on the credit card land stuff. And if I don't even, can, can I even find a picture of any of that stuff? Let me see if, uh, if I could find a picture for you guys of the, I think it's the Genius Mobile. Mobile. Uh, I'm trying to remember the exact name of the damn thing. Uh, that's it right there. Yeah, that's that's it right there. There's a regular Genius pin pad that we would hook up to Retail Pro or Prism that would sit on a counter, right? And that's the mobile version right there. So it's very, very, I think it's very user friendly in that you can ha hand it to the customer, they can see the screen, they can punch the keypad, they can stick their card in. We don't ever have to touch their card. Right, we don't want to touch their card. We don't want to be uh, liable if their card is breached. Right, so so we we hand them the device. They put the card in. They make the choices on the screen. They put the pin in. Whatever they do, they hand it back to you. Obviously, with current politics as they are, we then run a, a Clorox wipe over it or something. Right, um, and then the Genius Mini, and then there's another version of it right there that's a little closer, better picture maybe. That gets you in, gets you in a little tighter, right? So the genius, um, the genius mini, which is the the approved. Uh, that is not it. Genius mini. There's way too many things on the internet. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm not finding any good pictures of the mini. Um, like I said, there's two versions though, and, and you can kind of see, um, you can kind of see the, uh, yeah, it's angry at me. Uh, that one version, like that, that version right there, it doesn't have a big thing that says Cayenne over it, by the way. It's just a black device, and it plugs into the bottom of the iPad, the regular charging port, right? I I felt that one was a little flimsy when I tested it. I just didn't like the way it connected, you know what I mean? Uh, the, the other version, which is black and square and roughly the same size, right? So it's around it's around maybe an inch uh, and a half square by maybe, you know, three quarters of an inch deep. It's not very big. 
it was just a straight little black box though. It was, it was just to, to process the card quickly. They just put the card in there. And so, um, but you, you definitely could, we can shop around those kinds of things. That's not a big deal. All right. And, um, All right. Any other questions or any other things I can answer? Um, and thanks, guys, for 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 you know beating me up and making me share that PowerPoint. I never thought about that. That really was a good idea. I mean, I don't know why you wouldn't really, to be honest. Um, just never thought about it before. So, all right. Any other questions? Anything else I can I can answer for you? Now, uh, do we want to go back through that PowerPoint? So if, uh, I know one of, you, one of you guys was late there, I think, uh, James. And if we want to run back through it real fast, of course, you have it. So, I mean, it's not that big a deal. You could just probably take a look at it yourself. But but this was set up originally by Foundry Logic, and we adapted it and changed it. But, you know, the platforms we're going over and what you can do with them. Uh, Foundry Logic does have the ability to be a line buster. If you don't want to actually process cards through it, you could actually you can configure it to to um, like put the transaction on hold and push it over on hold. So then you could scan their stuff down in line, push it into the register. When they got to the register, they could just unhold the transaction, take the money, right? So Prism is never going to do that. It's it's a fully functioning mobile point of sale, right? It's it's just it's just a fully functioning mobile point of sale. It's not ever going to be. Um, And of course, techs are, are chatting with me during a webinar, and it says I'm on a webinar in the schedule, right? So, uh, all right. Um, uh, right, so this is just a quick summary of what you can do. You can make a quick sale, you can charge a credit card. Um, the receipt loads into Retail Pro real time, almost real time. We saw it load, it took about three or four seconds to get into Retail Pro from Foundry Logic. Prism is Retail Pro, so it's just a workstation it loads as fast as any other workstation on the network right to compare the two they both can add customers they can both scan items they can both show, show the receipts in retail pro they can both uh part well i know well you could i guess i guess you could now that i think about it you could park a sale you could place a sale on hold right in retail pro 9 and in prism then when you put something on hold it can be unheld from any, any other workstation a little awkward i don't know why i would do that to be honest it's kind of weird um you can do searches in both. We really didn't do searches in both, but the standard searching applies. So, um, you know, we, we did a, kind of almost do a search in Foundry Logic, but, but Prism is Retail Pro, so wildcard searches apply, right? And you can also go choose items from inventory, just like you can in regular Prism. Um, yes, all these things. Of course, Prism has shipping addresses and tax fields, fees, etc. And, and Foundry Logic has made accommodation for those. Um, this is the Foundry Logic sort of view. Uh, using this is a Captubo. I think the Linea Pro is is a newer version. I think that's even on its way out. But they all the sleds all look roughly the same. There's just so much different kinds of hardware out there now. Um, right, they're all PCI compliant. You have to go with the PCI compliant. By the way, that's that's a critical piece. I think I've made that point, so we won't beat it up too much. That's just a diagram of how how it works. So, uh, and I should probably pause on this point that I did not cover it before. So, if you're still watching, that's kind of exciting. So, you see retail mobile services, right? So, what is that piece? So, right down here, you see that I'm actually running the Retail Pro Mobile Manager. So, this is this. Is, if you're thinking about baseball, uh, the the uh, the mobile device would be the pit pitcher. If you, you get where I'm going, that's the catcher, right? This is what's this is what's catching those transactions and relaying them into Retail Pro. So this has to be running on a workstation on your network, and then the the devices themselves they are they're actually directed over to that that um, 
and it looks like my little thing disconnected again. Man, you turn your head for a second, and uh, the air server dies, right? Um, so if we go back to this uh, mobile device here, right, and I, uh, I log out in the upper left corner, uh, you see here uh, that I can go to settings, and I can direct this towards any 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 IP address on my network, right? So, um, absolutely can can connect this to. You would need to connect it to the the device that's running your mobile manager, right? That's that's how that works. So, this is the same mobile manager that would that would connect both the physical inventory piece, right? So, the that that there is the the mobile. Okay, stop. All right. Oh, nice. I'm upside down. No wonder I can't do it. All right. So that's that's the mobile point of sale. That right there is the is the mobile inventory. Right. This is where you would like scan a section and upload it for counting. Right. And they're licensed separately through through uh, through um, now, Prism would just use a normal inventory scanner, so a Prism would not. I mean, I guess you could be. I never thought about that. I guess, I mean, you could because you can scan a section into a Retail Pro workstation or a Prism workstation. So I guess you could you could actually take the Prism and open a zone and start scanning stuff directly into it. Since the the, the workstation is now fully portable. I'm guessing I never thought about it, but I'm guessing you could do that. I don't know why you couldn't, right? Uh, so, so anyway, um, right. So I just went through the same things for Prism, but they're roughly exactly the same things we just talked about. And here's some here's some quick shots of Prism and on on different devices on a monitor, on an iPad, a couple of iPads, and and the the the, the little tiny uh, the mini the the Genius Mini that plugs into the device. And then a nice shot of the screens, you know. Um, by the way, too, the other weird aspect about Prism, which I don't know that it's that exciting, but but obviously the app is the way to go, right? The app is is the cool way to get in there quickly. You can though, and I tried it earlier, and I don't know if it's it's going to be successful. Uh, it's it's uh, but you can browse into Prism using just using um, Siri. I mean, not Siri, uh, Safari. Right, you could just browse in. The difference, though, is that um, this this app right here is connecting to that proxy. So Prism uses something called a proxy, and it has to be running, as I found out this morning the hard way. Um, and the proxy is what talks to your devices, so your regular workstation or your portable workstation is going to need to have a proxy running on a real PC somewhere, right? So so that's 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 in, to enable you to connect to a printer. You know what I mean? And actually print a receipt. So the drivers would be installed on that PC, the printer would be connected either wirelessly or or uh or wired could be sitting there on the counter. Uh then so so the mobile device connects to the proxy, and the proxy connects to the hardware. If that makes sense, to everybody. Since since this here, this here, this this version of Prism is is essentially a, a browser window, right? It's not actually necessarily installed on this PC. This one is actually, but 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 the the Prism client per se is running. It could be running on a server in another state. Or it could be connecting to a local database. Probably you should have it connecting to at least a Microsoft SQL database, which is uh, less expensive than putting a V9 uh, Oracle database in, right? You could relay through a Microsoft SQL database much cheaper. Um, but you should have a local database running so you're not running without a safety net, right? I mean, in this in this world, connectivity is great now, especially in the states here. But there are sections that the internet goes down quite frequently. And uh, if the internet goes down, you're down. If you don't have a if you don't have a local database, right? So, I'm not sure I'm totally willing to do that. Um, so, all right. Um, 
just checking my my notes here. Um, I mean, the chat. Um, and you're very welcome. Thanks, James. Um, um, and uh, and so a question is: If I'm setting up an event offsite and I have 4G mobile service on an iPad or an iPhone, would it work the same as it connected to a wireless network? Yeah, it should. Um, I mean, there's some hurdles to get over there in that you're now outside your network. So that's my concern, but I've, I've seen it done. So yes, I, I would say it can work, absolutely. But we've, we would have to set that up ahead of time with like Ken or someone here at our office, one of the really geeky techs. and. Um, and, and, and get through those, the, get through the firewall, make sure the connection's good and that we can get data in there, right? So, so you'd have to have a credit card processing Bluetooth device that would connect to the device directly, it would be in your hand, and then would, it would then, then uh, process through your 4G connection to the processor. So there's a number of little technical hurdles I would want to test fully before we went out and tried that. But yeah, I would say we should do it. I mean, it would seem to be the logical way to do that. Um, I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna go do that, yeah, I would I would think that'd be a nice solution. Um, you know, and, and it's nice to have a, an iPad that's 4G when you're not using it for a sale too. So, um, yeah, I I I don't know yet why it wouldn't work, uh, and I have seen people do things like that. So. I'm not the be-all, end-all tech guy. I'm more the training and report builder, but um, but I I can't see how it wouldn't work, and I would want to I want to get get that tested through our tech department with Ken or someone or Nick or any of the senior techs to make sure that that could fly. But yeah, I, that that's why Retail Pro went the direction they went uh, with with Prism is because that's the direction that the market's going and they needed to be ready and it's taken longer to get that up to speed always seems to uh but but they're getting it there and it's getting it's starting to look pretty nice it's always the way our, our retail pro rolls out the first version is really rough and the next in incarnations are a little better but then they kind of get into that area where it starts to become a sweet spot and they're almost there they're almost there with prism it's starting to look pretty exciting now um, I didn't think they would get the style thing handled, but they, they did. They got the style thing handled. You can build a style grid directly in Prism now. There's a few more hurdles they need to get over that are not quite there. Uh, but right now, you still get, if you were to switch over to, to, to Prism fully, you get what's called RIL. Now, RIL is the retail integration layer. It's basically Retail Pro 9 with a different skin. That's all it is. It's Retail Pro 9, and what they've done is they've disabled the re receipt section uh, because of some legal things having to do with Intuit and ownership of Retail Pro 9 and that kind of stuff. So, so, so when you buy or switch to Prism, you're still actually are running Retail Pro 9 in the background. It's just called Retail Integration Layer or RIL. And so, to a large degree, a lot of the functionality of Retail Pro 9 is still there, and it's supposed to be. Um, supposed to be slowly taken offline, disabled over time as Prism becomes fully online. If you see where that's going, but um, right now it's, you're really not not missing a beat. You're going to have everything fully functional, just like it was in version nine. So I don't see. Um, anyway. Um, Excellent. I really appreciate everybody's uh, participation today, um, and uh, I appreciate you guys asking questions. Um, it, it's really tough talking to yourself for an hour. If there are no other questions, thank you too, Paul. Um, I'm going to tell you guys to have a great day, and everybody, please stay safe out there. We're almost over this damn pandemic, but it'd be nice if uh, we don't have any more, any more of our clients get sick. And um, all right, take care then. All right, see you guys.